All right, first thing that I always tell uh, my students when they want to make a long board is I want to have them sketch out something on how they want it to look like. Not the shape wise, but more like design wise. And our typical long boards are going to be something about 10 inches long or wide and about 40 inches long. And so that's kind of our workspace to work in. And you know, you can make it whatever size you want, but this is a the standard size to work with. So what I want to make sure the students understand is that they're not deciding on the shape yet. So don't worry about like the shape of your longboard yet, what's going to be cut out. Don't worry about that yet. We're more worried about just what the actual design look-wise. Do you want to have stripes? Do you want to have some kind of crazy uh, design going on inside there or whatever it is? And so. Uh, the easiest ones are going to be stripes, if you want to do something like that. And so it just needs to add up to 10 inches. So maybe you want to have a stripe right in the middle. Maybe that stripe needs, you want it to be, say, 2 inches wide on something like that. And so we still have to come up with at least 10 inches total. So we want to have a little small stripe next to that on either side. Maybe those are going to be 1 inches each. So that's 1, and that's a 2, that's a 1. So we still have six inches we have to deal with, so maybe we want to have this a three inch stripe and a three inch stripe. And that would add up to ten. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So whatever it is that you plan on doing, just make sure it adds up to ten inches this way, and then forty inches long. Maybe you want to have these two one inch stripes be a darker wood, maybe some cherry or walnut or cedar or something like that to give it a little bit of color on that. And you can go with whatever kind of wood and look that you want. But that's the first thing is just to sketch out what it is you want your longboard to look like. Um, later on, we can cut whatever shape we want out of this. Okay, there's two different ways to make the longboard. One of them is using what's called a veneer, which is just a very thin strip of wood here that you can cut out different designs with, and they have a whole bunch of different colors and other different types of wood for veneer. The other one is just a solid wood that you cut out, glue together, and then mill it down very thin, and you can use that as a top and bottom layer of your uh, longboard as well. Both methods work just fine. And one nice thing about the veneer, these two were done with veneering, is you can get very intricate with the designs that you're doing. Uh, cutouts and other things like that. Whereas the solid wood, you could do that, but it's just a lot more work. So typically if you're doing stripes or other things, the solid wood's going to be a lot easier for you. So it's up to you on which style you want to do. We're talking about just the top and also the bottom of your longboard. You can do different designs for that as well. So uh, for what you want to have your longboard look like. So decide if you want to do solid wood or the veneer. And nice thing about the veneer is you just tape it together. So once you get it kind of the shape and the size that you want and everything like that, uh, you can just take some tape and just tape all the little edges together where it's coming together everywhere. And just make sure that it does not overlap. You don't want them to sit on top of each other. Instead, they want to sit right next to each other, edge to edge. And so you just got to be careful make sure it's like that. You don't have to tape the entire edge all the way along. If you want to, you can. But uh, just a few pieces of tape every so often, enough just to hold it together. So when you tape these all together, they should just stay and then we can use this as our actual top layer that gets glued down when you're assembling your longboard together. And so uh, if you're doing some real fancy designs and other things like that, instead of cutting them out by hand with like an X-Acto blade, or even scissors, you can cut veneer with scissors. Uh, you may use the laser engraver to cut out different designs, and that's probably what I'm going to do on part of this here. I might do a, some kind of a neat design that has some curves and other things to it that uh, the laser would be a lot easier to use. So again, just tape it together, and this whole thing will just stay together like that. Now, if you need to trim any of the veneer at all, you can use an X-Acto blade. Just make sure that uh, you don't just cut directly on my bench top. Have something underneath that you're cutting on so it doesn't cut into my bench top. Um, I just use a little extra board for a straight edge here. And then you can just trim 
any excess off if you don't want uh, some of the veneer there. And it cuts fairly easy. Just slice off those little pieces that you need to. There we go. Now we've got 10 inches by 40 inches exactly on that. All right, now if you're wanting to doing the laser engraver, you get it on the computer and the program you're going to use right in the middle of the desktop is called Corel Draw. You can open up that. So over here we'll just click on new document. And then it'll ask us a few things about it. We want to put in, you know, name it, preferably your name or whatever it is that you're going to be making here. Um, and that way you can find it later if we need to. And then right here where it says width and height, this is where you want to put in the size pieces that you're putting into the laser. Now I'm putting in something that is 20 and a half inches width and then the height is 10. And that's the size of the uh, pieces that I'm going to put in there because I'm actually putting in half of my long board at a time in there. I'm going to cut it out. So you hit OK and then it'll bring up basically an image of your entire piece here that you have. Over on the left hand side of the screen you've got all your tools to work with as well. You've got drawing tools, text tools, and other things like that. Um, a lot of people want to just do simple shapes and other things like that so you can you know, hover over these and it'll tell you what they are if you want to draw uh, different shapes. There's, you know, if maybe you want to do a star or something like that you can draw stars and click and drag them and size them however you want and move them around wherever you want. Um, but uh, also a lot of people want to do some kind of image or other thing like that. And so you can just get onto the internet. Uh, I've already opened up the internet here. And whatever thing you want to do, I would highly recommend change the color uh, to black and white only. And also change maybe the type to a line drawing or a clip art or something like that. And, and usually you can find things a little bit uh, easier to use. And something, for example, like this, solid black is, is a lot easier. To, to work with uh, rather than something that has a whole bunch of color to it and, and other things like that or other backgrounds. So I'm just going to go ahead and just do uh, this image of the dolphin here. I'm just going to go ahead and just copy the image and then I'm just going to paste it back onto the Corel Draw. And there's our image. Uh, again, you can size it where you want, place it where you want. Um, what I want to do with this is just get the outline and one thing to get an outline of it uh, There's a couple ways, but if you right click on the image And then you'll scroll down. There's one that says outline trace uh, There is a quick trace and that one works as well um, Sometimes I like to do the outline trace because it'll ask me what type it is and this for example is a clip art So I can tell it's a clip art and it'll trace it a little bit easier for me And it gets rid of the background and other things on here as well um, you can change up the detail and, and sizing and other things that you want and then you'll hit OK when you want it and it'll trace that image and it got rid of all the background and other things like that. Now we just need to get rid of all the fill and add a line around it as well. So I'll put in your options at the top here. There are some options for uh, a line. Now we want it to be a hairline. Uh, anytime you want to cut something out it needs to be a hairline. If you do it on one of these others it's not going to cut it out, it'll just etch it. So we're going to change that to hairline. And then our fill on this, we're going to have it be no fill. Um, a few ways you can do that. Again, you can just right click, object properties, and it'll bring up your object properties. And then one of those object properties is the fill, and you can just say no fill. And then there's our dolphin, just the outline of it. And that way we can just cut that out. All right, now once you have your image outline traced, hairline placed where you want it, You'll go over to uh, File Print, just like you're printing it on a printer. You go File Print, and it'll bring up the options here. Now you do want to click on Preferences here, uh, Preferences, and this is going to be a vector, which is means it's cutting. Raster would be just etching it into it, where vector's cutting. Uh, you can do the autofocus if you want, or you can manually focus it. Uh, your speed and your power just depends on the material that you're using. Uh, because we're doing veneer, we don't have to go super high power or anything like that. And if you need my help on these settings, let me know and I can come over and help you. You'll hit OK. Uh, actually, before that, one thing very important I forgot to say is you have to change your board size. 
Uh, it'll automatically think it's an 8.5 by 11 piece of paper, so you have to change it to whatever board size was that you originally put in. And mine was 20.5 by 10, and so you're going to have to tell it that. And then it'll give you a, an outline or a look of what this will look like. And if that looks like what uh, your paper is, you're good to go. And then you'll hit OK. And that'll send it over to the laser uh, ready to, for you to engrave and cut that out. When you send it to the laser, it should pop up on the screen here. Uh, before you hit go to print it, make sure if you are going to be cutting anything that you've turned on the fan and as well as the pump. If you're just etching, just the fan is fine. Here's our fan here and the pump is here. Just make sure that both those are turned on when you're going to be cutting. And then you can go ahead and hit go. And it'll come over and if you did autofocus, it'll autofocus it. And then it should cut out your design that you did. It goes fairly fast. Once you've cut them out on the laser, you can just put everything together, and I like to do it on the side that I taped as well, and just kind of fit things together, and hopefully everything should just fit in place. Again, you're not overlapping anything, you're just putting everything edge to edge on this, and so just getting it all, and again, you want to tape this on here so it doesn't come off, and get that all taped. And again, you don't need to tape every spot, but just make sure that it's nice and tight, that it doesn't move on you you get it and it should just stay together and you should be good to go and then once it's all taped you should be able to just carefully flip it over and see what the other side looks like so with it all put together and that can be the top or the bottom or whatever you want for your longboard all right when you're ready to glue this together again whether you're doing the veneer or the solid wood uh, for your top and bottom. The process is the same. You have to work very quickly. I would highly recommend get a lot of glue, maybe in a paint tray or something like that, and a roller brush to put it on quickly. Uh, maybe even have someone help you if you can. Uh, but you have to do this very quickly. If you're doing the veneer, okay, which is what I'm going to show here, you want to have four strips of the 8th inch Baltic birch plywood that I've pre-cut. I've pre-cut these already to the right sizes. You need four of them. You'll notice also the grain direction on some of these alternate. So these grain directions are going straight, where this next one here is going this way. And you want to have that grain alternate as you lay these together. That'll make it a little bit stronger. Um, and so when you're choosing the boards, you know, if you want to choose some that alternate, that's great. Uh, again, work very quickly, and the main problem that we've had with longboard glue ups is that people are not putting enough glue on or they're not getting it to the edges and so you want to make sure when you're put, spreading this on that it goes all the way to the edge and covers the entire surface. So we're going to put glue on the entire surface, set that down, put glue on the next one, set it on top, next one on top, next one on top, then we're going to take our veneer pieces, we'll put glue on this face, we'll take one of our veneer pieces and I like to have it so the tape side is facing up so you can clear the tape off after it's dry. We'll put that one on, flip it over, and then we'll add our last veneer piece on, again with the tape side up on the opposite side. And you have to work very fast and make sure the glue covers the entire surface on this. So we'll show you what we mean by that. So get that roller brush and be pretty liberal with the glue. Don't uh, just put a tiny bit of on. You want to have that glue cover that entire board and all the way to the very edge of the board covering that. Notice I also have some paper down, 
so I don't get glue on my bench top. Please don't get glue on my bench top. If you do, wipe it up very quickly, uh, wet paper towel or something like that. So cover that whole thing. Now you don't want to have globs of glue all over this, uh, drips everywhere and things like that. But you do want to have a good surface area where it covers the entire surface on each of these boards here, all the way to the edges. Those edges are crucial. A lot of times when people have their boards come apart because they didn't get enough glue all the way to the edge on that. So we got glue on that first board there. We're just going to set this one down. We're going to start gluing the next board. Again, work very quickly when you do this process here. And all the way to the edges. Okay, now we're not going to do both faces of each of these boards. I don't have time for that. But if you can get a good enough coverage on that, then you should be all right. Our overall thickness on this when it's all put together is going to basically be about a half inch thick, possibly just a hair thicker than a half inch thick. On this. So all the way to those edges, place that right on top, line it up nice, and then start getting that next board and keep going from there. Okay, now when you're ready to put the veneer on, this wants to curl very easily on you when it gets contact with the glue or other things. So, it's helpful to have a wet paper towel that you do on the opposite side, you'll see, to prevent any, any of that veneer starting to curl up. And I like to just line up my first one, so I've got glue on this surface here all the way, ready to go. I'm just going to quickly set this down, center the best I can eyeball it. And then it's going to want to curl on me a little bit, so I like to flip this over quickly before it has a chance to curl too much. Get that on a nice flat surface, and then when I glue this side here, I have to work very quickly getting this into the vacuum bag. And you want to make sure that you have told me that you're ready to put in the vacuum bag before you even start to add your last pieces here, all the way to the edges. Okay, we're going to place our next thing of veneer on it, and then get it in that vacuum bag as fast as we can after that. So I'm going to place this on my mold once I've centered this and gotten it positioned how I want. Make sure the veneers are lining up, looking good. If it does start to curl, again, take that wet paper towel and you can just go over this with the wet paper towel and that will help prevent some of that veneer from curling up on you as well. Now, it's important that you, when you're placing this on the mold, that you know which part of the mold is the top and the bottom and as far as like standing on your board. So you got to think, okay, when I'm standing on my long board, I want the part that I'm standing on to be touching the face of the long board. So I want to have that design, this design here, touch my, or I want to stand on that part. So I'm going to have the part I'm standing on face down on that. I'm just going to line this up evenly, same spacing on both sides, get it nice and even on both sides, and then I've got to get this into that vacuum bag as fast as possible. Okay, when you place the vacuum bag, just be careful not to catch any of the corners on the bag. Make sure this bag doesn't get any holes or anything in. Just kind of slide it in gently, place it where you want. And then we've got our little clamp pieces here that we can just clamp on. sucking everything out. Just make sure everything's lined up straight. If you need to put any pressure down on it, you can. You can press any bubbles out. Make sure it's just sucking it down nice and tight. It'll take a minute or two and it'll get all the air out of this thing and shape it to that mold. And once it stops sucking all air out, let it sit and dry here for at least two hours. So you want to have this thing completely dry. Be sure to pour any excess glue back into the container 
and make sure especially you clean out the container and the brush really well so the next person can use it. Go over to the sink and rinse it out and squeeze all that glue out of the brush. All right, now once it's dry, go ahead and take it out of the bag and go ahead and uh, peel off a lot of that uh, tape if you're doing the veneer there that's on there and it'll just peel right off. I've got four different patterns if you want to choose from my four or, or again you can uh, just draw whatever shape you want on here. Uh, I'm just kind of take some and just place it on and just see which pattern you like the best and position it where you want. Um, whichever one you want to do. This one looks good. And then just trace it on there. Now make sure this is centered up exactly where you want it. Uh, the direction that you want it. Uh, and then make sure it's held real tight when you're tracing this so it doesn't move on you. And I like to try to get it centered on here as well. Just for the shape wise. That looks pretty good right there. And I like to use a pen or something dark to trace it. You can use a pencil, that's fine, but just make sure it's a nice, good, solid line when you're tracing this. Now when you're cutting this out on the bandsaw, most important thing is that you leave your lines. Do not cut off your lines. So you want to cut about a sixteenth inch away from your line. Uh, you can always cut more off, so do not cut off any of your lines here. And do this in sections. You know, you don't have to go all the way around the whole profile in one pass. You know, cut small sections off at a time and work your way down to the line. Now again, you want to go about 16th or so away from your line. Just make sure you see your line all the way around. We will do some sanding to get rid of all the rest of the excess. For your outside curves, whether it's on the back of the longboard or the front of the longboard, we're going to use either the disc sander or the belt sander here to get all those. Your inside curves, any of those, we'll use the spindle sander. And any of your long edges here, we're going to use that uh, horizontal belt sander to get all those out as well. So. got it all sanded you should have a nice smooth edge 
all the way around the entire longboard. No bandsaw marks, no scratches or anything like that. A nice smooth all the way around. The okay, now once you've got it all sanded all the way nice and easy, you want to take a router with a small roundover bit in there and we're just going to round over all the edges here, all the way around the top and on the bottom side as well. You'll have to adjust the clamp every so often just to make sure you don't hit into your bench top. And just go all the way around the whole thing and we'll flip it over and get the other side. and get both the top and the bottom edges rounded over with that router. After you've got all the edges rounded over with that router, go ahead and just do your sanding on here. Uh, just go all the way up to 220 grit would be fine. On any of these edges and other things like that, if you want to do it by hand, you can just kind of curve the sandpaper and just kind of hit that by hand a little bit just to keep those edges nice and round. But get both faces on this all the way up to 220 grit. Be careful not to sand too much through that veneer. It's really thin. So, uh, But just get it nice and smooth. I wouldn't do anything with really rough grit because it's already fairly smooth. So maybe start with some 150, 180 or something like that. <laughs> Once it's all sanded really well, uh, we need to drill our holes for our trucks on both ends here. And I've got some patterns here uh, that you can use. And on the pattern, all it has is just uh, all the four holes. And it has a little dashed line here where you need to line it up in the center of your board here. Uh, this one here is if you want to do the drop through trucks. Um, same concept there. You can line up your center line with the center of your board here. So first thing we need to do is just find the very middle of the board and just draw a real faint line all the way down the very middle so we can make sure that the front and the back trucks are actually lined up and not crooked or anything like that. And so uh, a lot of students are struggle with this a little bit trying to find the middle of it and because they kind of hook their tape measure on and they try to just find the middle of some uh, hard measurement like this one is 5 and 3 16 and then they scratch their head for a while and can't figure out where the middle of 5 and 3 16 is. So what I like to do is just take my tape measure and just kind of go along the edge until I find an easy spot. Okay, right there's eight inches, so that's one's easy. I can just mark it at four, okay, instead of having to figure out some hard measurement there. So also put a little uh, mark over on this side of the board as well. Again, find an easy measurement, okay? And then just take your straight edge, line it up between the two. But you don't need to trace all the way down the board if you don't want to. You really only need to trace near the both ends there where it's gonna be having the trucks attached. And then you're going to use your truck pull patterns and line up that dashed line. So I was doing the front of the board here. Line up your dashed line with your little center mark. And then you would trace the four holes right where it'd go. So just trace those four holes. Same thing on the back of the board over here. Line it up on the back, right, even with your dashed marks. And then trace your four holes. After you've traced your holes, you're going to go ahead and use a cordless drill with a 3 16 inch bit. And don't drill into my bench top, but drill all the way through right on your holes. Straight up and down. All four. Okay, same thing on the other side. Once you've done all those, I like to use a countersink bit, just a small countersink that you can use to countersink these 
so that the heads of the screws just go inside that just a little bit. So you're only countersinking just a little bit, not too much on those um, on both sides here as well. So. make sure when you're done that the drill bits and all the patterns come back to me so I don't lose those. These are the ones I have. So uh, After we're done with that, we're going to go ahead and sand off our little pencil line that we drew on here and any last final sanding that you need to do and it's ready for the lacquer after that. Lacquer and also the, we're going to put the grip on it as well. We're going to get three coats of lacquer on this, sanding lightly in between each coat. Before that third and final coat is dry, we're going to go ahead and sprinkle on the grip. And what I use is basically just this crushed glass. It works really well. You just sprinkle it on while it's still wet and it'll stick to it. And then you'll just seal it with the final coat of lacquer on top. So we'll go ahead and get that done. want to buy any wheels and trucks for your longboards, I usually just go to Amazon, uh, just search longboard trucks, and the ones I usually get, I think they're like 38 bucks or something like that, this one's right here. Uh, it comes with everything, the wheels, the bolts, the bearings, trucks, everything, and uh, you can even choose what color wheels you want and everything like that, and so, uh, again, they're only like 37 bucks or 38 bucks um, for the ones that you want. You can those if you want. That's the ones I usually get. So.